Welcome to episode 19 of The Replomat, a uh, almost regular podcast slash YouTube thingy uh, in which two, uh, I was going to say Trek fans, but maybe that applies now. Certainly um, one Trek fan and one noobs, me, yeah. Andy, and me, Tim, go through uh, DS9 in order. And we are now on the season finale in the hands of the prophet, which was written by Robert Hewitt Wolf, directed by David Livingston, and was first aired on the 20th of June, 1993, which is only makes us a month out and, you know, 30 years. Oh, 30 years, yes. Yeah, yeah, 30 years. But anyway, before we get on to that, Tim. How are Hello. we doing, mate? Uh, all right. I'm not sure I'm necessarily ready to be a card-carrying Star Trek fan yet. No, not quite there yet. No, I'm, I'm enjoying the series, but I, um, I'm, I'm not sure I'd... <laughs> I'm not going to sure commit I'd, to that just yet. <laughs> I'd, I'd submit myself uh, quite so much. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm doing all right. I've had, um, I've had a fun week since we last spoke. Uh, lots, of, lots of family time, which has been good. Um, of course, this first week holidays. of summer day, yes. Yeah, so I, uh, mm. I had the week off work and... Um, so uh yeah family bits and bobs this this and that uh done a bit more writing done a lot more writing actually which is uh even better that's uh that's, that's made me feel very good about myself so um Excellent. yeah i'm i'm over the halfway point in the uh in the unit novel now which is uh which is good so it feels like it's all downhill uh mm. from now on uh, it's it's your point now. Yeah. rather than yeah hopefully not downhill in terms of quality but oh i see i see Right, less effort needed now. I got you. Okay, <laughs> I was wondering um, where you was going. So um, that's it. And because of because I've been kind of in the zone a lot more, mm. I've I've watched no TV at all. Oh, uh, so I've not watched any more Cracker. Not watched any more Robin and Sherwood. Um, I've not read any more any any books. I, I started uh, reading the um, Stephen Gallagher's um, Warriors uh, Warriors Games ah. uh, Doctor Who Target. Yes, um, yes. Uh, the other week and I've, I've read about sort of i don't know about 20 pages or something and it looks really good but i've i've not picked it up again since because i've been concentrating on, on writing the so it's i've been sort of fam family chores around the house and writing and that's been my my week which um probably sounds desperately dull to most people but i think it probably sounds very normal to most people <laughs> yeah because i think majority of the people watching this i imagine have pretty much similar lives you know, life. Life, you know. yes, exactly. Unfortunately, so. we don't have, we're not all pe people with endless disposable income where we can be out partying every night, clubbing it all the time, because no, so we've no, done I, that. I, I imagine remember, you've I remember, done that, I remember right? those things. Yeah. Did you vaguely recall these things back in your uni days or whatever? Assuming you did uni. Well, uh, I did. Uh, last time I went clubbing was actually last summer in London. Uh, I... I uh, um, Went to um, was it the was it the O2 in Islington? Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, some some I, I happened to be visiting family for the week, and some friends were also back in London, and we uh, we we did indie night on the Monday. Uh, uh, excuse to five, get hammered, which is, which is great. But uh, uh, apart from that, I haven't done it for no, I haven't you know, been twenty odd years. I've been to the pub occasionally, you know, for a nice social oh, you know, yeah. drink, whatever, but. I haven't clubbed in quite a few years now. I'm just not that interested. No, it's like the lads from work. I wasn't the I oldest person there, which was which was pleasing. I, I did oh. wonder at one point. I had that kind of awful realization of standing at the bar and then suddenly thinking, oh, oh crap, no. I'm going to be like. <laughs> you know, mind you, I suppose I was out with friends, so they weren't that much. They weren't that much different to me. In well, age, that but, helps. That certainly yes. helps. That so helps. anyway, yeah, get, get your ass out there and go clubbing. But um, in the meantime, how, don't, don't, um, don't use such words to me. As <laughs> <laughs> you well, know, it could well be quite literally. Um, <laughs> my week, <laughs> um, much the same way. Really, work. Not as much as coming up, because I've got a six-day work week coming up, so that's going to be a fun mm. one. So literally this time next week, which I, we probably won't be recording next week, so we might take a break. I haven't decided yet. Um, like, we need to take breaks on this, because we haven't done that yet, have we? Um, 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, my week is, you know, work. I've finished proofing the Cambridge books. I'm back on to um, Blum's first of the two books. Cool. Um, I've, because like I said last week, I it's been a while since I did any editing on it. I'm going back to the beginning. I'm just yeah. listening to the first few chapters I edited because what I often do, which I haven't done for a while due to time limits, but if I've got time... I tend to edit a few chapters, then go back and listen to it. So I would play it to me so I can hear. Right. Because does it read it to you in a, it, it doesn't read it to you in a kind of a stilted way. Does no, it? it's actually pretty good to be fair. Oh, you might be surprised. You can, change, you can change the speed on it so you can give a more flow to it. And it's yeah. more than one different voice. I tend to have this woman's voice because her accent tends to work better. The British had the, British guy accent is very weird and they pronounce words in some odd ways sometimes, especially words I don't wouldn't necessarily know normally. Um, yes. But it's good because then, as you know, the eyes plays tricks. Eventually, your eyes fill in the gaps that you know, that are there because you just know this. You know, you, just the odd word that your brain just automatically skips because mm -hmm. you assume it's there and your brain just assumes it's there. But when you're listening, you're like, or like. Um, the other day when I was listening to one particular scene, when I read it, it sounded fine. But then when I listened to it back, this one sentence, I'm like, oh, that's quite a little bit chunkier than it came across when I read it to me. So now I'm hearing it, I'm like, okay, we can cut that bit because obviously we didn't need that part of the sentence. But again, it's things you don't necessarily notice when you're reading, but you do notice when you're listening. Yes. Which is a good thing because if any of these end up becoming audiobooks, we can hopefully nip that stuff in the bud now than having to listen to an audio book of it and go, oh, maybe we should have cut that bit. Because I've done that with a few of the stuff that we, like some of the early left with Stuart, where I've listened to Terry read, say, Fang Rock or whatever, and I'm like, yeah, as an audio book, it's a very different thing when somebody's actually reading it and kind of performing it too, to what it is when you're just writing it. So... But, you know, we've had this discussion before, but the difference between writing for audio, even as a book, than to just a book that you're reading. It's a yeah. quite a different thing. Only slightly exactly. sometimes, but different. But, yeah, beyond that, um, I've obviously been doing my usual watching over Only Fools, okay. which is just as racist as ever. Um, Only Fools and racist, oh, yeah. Oh, my. Uh, what was it? I forget. Uh, oh, yes, right. I was watching that for last yesterday, last yesterday, yesterday during the day, I think. Just last yesterday. I was going to say last night, um, but it wasn't last night. Yesterday, um, and they basically they get caught up in this um, burglary happening in a, in a store by this black guy. Um, so obviously, it's very eighties depiction and well written mm. in that way, at least. And most of it's fine. The character, he's just a normal character, a bit of a chancer, but then so is Delboy, so that's fine. That's a nice balance. Um, but it's one line, and I'm like, ooh, ooh. That was really, I'm just like, ooh, dear God. There's this bit where they're sitting there, food, they've got to wait 14 hours so the, the store opens the next day so they can get into the safe. And they've closed the blinds, turned the lights low and all this stuff. And Dell looks over at him and goes, I forget his name. He's like, are you still there? And I'm like, wow. Oh, no. Yeah. I was like, it, I'm sure at the time it got lots of laughs. But I just listened yeah. to it like, I was waiting for the really horrible response from the, the, the black character to come with some just as bad response because obviously it's written by a white guy. But fortunately, there's no reciprocated the response which i was kind of like yeah but yeah when he said that i was like wow yeah just 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 no that was just see racism man you know which is quite apt for what we're about to be discussing um yes. yeah very topical but yeah um so i'm doing that i'm still reading the v books same one but I've also, on a whim, you may have noticed on social media posted that somewhat on a whim, I picked up the the first omnibus of the Asterix comics. Oh, I didn't. I missed that. Um, well, because hmm. I used I used to work, read, read them when I was in school in the library. I remember reading the school library all the time, and I, I was just on 
Amazon thinking, oh, I've not spent much money this week because I've been working. So what can I get just as a frivolous thing? Come across that, it's like, ah, oh, wow, shall I? Yeah, I saw it. It was only like 15 quid or whatever. So it's like, like the first three issues. I'm like, and it's actually quite funny. The, um, I don't think I even clicked it when I was younger. Because again, I was in 11, 12, whatever. But the names of the Gauls, in particular, and the Romans are kind of interesting. Yes. Um, I just did <laughs> the whoosh over my head. Um, um, the Druid called Getafix. And I'm like, you know, that never clicked. Well, maybe it did. I don't remember. And the chief of the village is called Vital Statistics. Vital and I just didn't see it. I never saw I don't remember seeing it as a kid. Maybe I did. And it just maybe I read it differently. I don't know. But I'm like, I mean, Asterix is, I mean, that in itself is an obvious one, you know what I mean? Obelisk, because he carries bloody big obelisks all the time. But yeah, I was like, huh, missed that. So when I'm reading that, I'm really like paying attention to everything that's going on in the background. Because you know, there's these guys who wrote that, they really have lots of background stuff going on. It's very clever and, and really it's, holds up yeah. well. I have you know, literally decades. So I'll definitely be getting, a, a, I think it's only the six volumes, which I guess equates to six times three whatever that is maths 18 there you go so there would be an 18 apparently of them originally okay. i guess so i think i may have to continue because it's it's not over the top funny but it's nice and subtle and clever funny you know it's not an escapism um yeah we, we don't have any of the um any of the comics or uh, graphic novels or whatever but hmm. um uh, we've uh, the boys and i have seen some of the um uh, uh, animated films oh, are, yeah. that are available through like uh, Netflix or uh, or Amazon or whatever. Um, the twelve oh. was it? The twelve tasks of Asterix. Okay, I think um, as uh, uh, and you know, and the, again, you, you, there's a certain amount of kind of historicizing that goes on because mm. the, the the depictions, some of the depictions are you know could be considered racist, of, you know, um, and uh, uh, it's so you there's always a, a little bit of adjustment that goes on but the, the the bottom line is they are just generally very funny yeah they are i uh, think yeah and very they, clever uh, surprisingly good fun yeah so I think yeah so. But yeah so that's my week that's what i've been cool. doing so shall we get on to talking about this surprisingly topical uh, episode as it turned out indeed okay yes. then right so we'll begin with what did you think of it? That was quite smooth. Um, smooth, it was smooth. I, we had mentioned it. I enjoyed it, um, and uh, and I liked the way that it kind of picked you up and sort of carried carried you along, particularly to much, particularly towards the end, where it kind of the the, the sort of the, the the pace it became much more like a sort of a thriller mm -hmm. towards the end. Um, uh, it's. Uh, it, it was a strong. It's a strong way to close the season. Not not as strong as last week's, but then I'm not sure that many would be. Um, but uh, I think it was probably the, the 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 right episode to end the first season. Yeah, I think so. Um, uh, so and uh, I the other the the other thing that occurred to me pretty early on actually was up until that point. It hadn't um, it hadn't registered with me um, how much or, or that the, the Bajoran society was so much more uh, geared towards uh, kind of a religious philosophy than yeah. uh, like a practical science. So, although in the main the the the, the, the we've only seen sort of a religious side of the Bajoran society up yeah. up, up till then. Um, I think, uh, as a viewer, I was looking at that as uh, you know, these were the sort of, these were aspects of the Bajoran society that were engaging with the mm -hmm. with the characters on DS Nine. Yeah. Um, but I hadn't uh, I hadn't really taken the time to think. Maybe this is the, you know maybe yeah, this is how yeah. their society is is based. So I just I feel I've learned a lot more about. It's Bajoran interesting society. to say that because, as you say, it's always been there. But I'd say when we touched upon it throughout the season, it's been 
specific to whichever character. Yes. So again, you can just assume it's their personal. Um, but yeah, because this this episode brings us right back to the beginning of DS Nine, because the beginning of DS Nine is kind of about this as well, but not as not blatantly, but not as in depth, I suppose. Because mm. this one really goes into it, really tackles it head on, which I think is a really good choice, actually. Like you yeah. said, I think. Although last week's duet is a stronger episode, dramatically, and not performatively necessarily, but certainly dramatically, mm. this one is definitely the right one to cap this season. I, you know, go right back to again, remind people, this is the show they want to make. And all the stuff we've been doing in between, like, not all of it, a lot of this season, has been traditional Star Trek-y stuff for the most part. But this is them saying, right, we're at the end of, I guess, this is how I interpret me for myself, is that they've reached the end and they're like, right, now we can kind of reaffirm our mission statement again because it's the end of the season now, so we're allowed to do that. And over the next the summer holiday, which is apt because here we are as well, um, they can then decide whether or not it's been received well enough. Is it worth pushing on this front or do we just go back to traditional and without being an obvious spoiler, clearly they all go with this because this is the heart of the show. And yeah, it's what struck me, like I said, when we were watching it, how topical it is 30 years on. Yeah, I think the, the, the science scary. religion thing is his. It's it's always topical though, because there's there's well, always, suppose, there, yeah. there, there are, there's, there's always um, discussions going on hmm. about them. It just some it, there is a, I suppose there's a slight ebb and flow. It just ha- at the moment, yeah, there is more of a uh, you know there there is more of a, um, a of a sort of discourse about about that that's kind of out there in the. So it's not so much the science with religion aspect of it. Although I think that's, as you say, that is very much of the ever flow of society, science versus religion, rationality versus religion, whatever, is a constant on and off. Yeah. My, I think, again, it's, as you said, I think it's happened before, but well, maybe it was happening back then as well, actually. Maybe that's why it's so top of because it's the scariness of the fact that it's still happening. The, specifically, the religion versus the school thing. Which of yeah. course is hugely happening, especially in the states right now. Yes, yeah, so, that's yeah, the thing that right I think is like that's literally happening with the Republicans, and they're fighting so hard to get the religion back into school. You know, where of course for the longest time in the states, it's supposed to be a division between these things deliberately. You can teach yes. religious stuff, but it's not religion shouldn't be the doctrine. It shouldn't be the prime thing. And of course, that's very much what Kai wins all about. You know, in that case, let's have separate schools. It's like defeating the point, right? But what I also saw another one that's quite topical is the bit when they went to get the those lolly stick things, Jim, Jom, Jom, Jobs, what are they called? I can't remember now. Yeah. Honestly, it's not Dom, Jom, but that's a that's a completed thing. Um, where the guy refused to sell him because they were so anti his religion. And of course that's something that's creeped up. Again, I don't think over here, not that I've heard so much. Well probably is because it constantly repeating the mistakes America makes. Um but it certainly is a thing that happened in America on several occasions where like say a gay couple wanted a cake for their wedding and the shop refused to make it. Or some religious people wanted something for their religious ceremony and the shop refused to make it, you know, Mm -hmm. which, and of course, when I saw that in this episode, I'm like, oh, yeah, that shockingly does happen. Again, I don't know if that was actually happening back then, but it certainly happened in the intervening 30 years. So, you know, I don't don't remember anything particularly strong, but then I don't, I, I, as like, like I said, it seems to be something that's just always bubbling along. Yeah, could be, uh, could be. Underneath. Uh, because, largely because the two points are almost entirely irreconcilable. Mm. See, um, this is, you said it irreconcilable. Like, I mean, I think they are to a point. But I think with this, again, I'm with the full knowledge of where the series goes. 
Um, I don't want to give any specifics away, but these themes are explored so much in the DNA of this show mm-hmm. that I think they actually present a decent case that they can be kind of reconcilable to a point. Um, okay. But again, this will be a discussion we'll have as we're getting more to it. But even in this point, um, yeah, it's quite scary actually when you watch it, not in a horror way, just the idea that this fundamental religiosity can weaponize people like mm. they did with this Neela character. Yeah, and you see that all the time. Of course, you see it all the time where some religious fanatic, because let's face it, Vedic win. Keep going to call it something else. Um, Vedic win, um, totally, totally radicalized that girl, you know, and deliberately yeah. so. You know, like Kira said at the end, she absolutely nailed it. You've literally got the school blown up, all this stuff going on just to get her opponent there to, to get rid of him, to assassinate him, just so yeah. she's the only one in the running. And yeah, you see that sadly all the time. I mean, you see in America, shockingly as well. You see over here these days as well a lot. It's odd, yeah, something like that can be so topical still. Mm. It's a bit a bit worrying, really, isn't it? That, it is. You know, you yeah. can have such a belief in something that has no... Um, no tangible evidence but you can believe in it in such a fundamental way that it can reshape everything you do to that extreme. It's, it's quite a disturbing idea. And, and the, yeah, the fact that there's no, there's, there's, there's no, uh, there's no flexibility for sort of tolerance mm. of, of others, uh, 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 as well. So it's, it, it, kind of becomes a competition hmm. see that's uh, one thing i liked this episode I'll, by the I'll end of it i like that at least by the end of this episode it's still ambiguous enough it doesn't necessarily land on either side as a narrative but there's enough in there to see that you know win was very much in the wrong um and majority of the Bajorans on the station seem to see that by the end at least yeah. that's the impression I get. I don't think yeah, it's so, explicit, but certainly that's the impression you get in that last scene when they were all there. Yeah, uh, a slightly more, um, um, a slightly less hardcore uh, sort of approach yeah. to the whole to the whole thing um, in the end, which is, which is yes, I suppose it's probably the the the, the, the closest that the episode was going to get. To um, uh, to um, uh, an agreement, mm. as it were, which I think is right because it's an agreement between the two sides. This kind of issue, I don't think, like you say, because it is on some level ir- irreconcilable, and I think you have to be honest about that when you're exploring it in fiction. Mm. You can't deal with this kind of topic and have a pat ending because fundamentals on either side and the more moderate moderates in the middle the fundamentals on either side are never well almost unlike ever likely to agree and meet in the middle some of them will but you know unfortunately majority of them won't you know it's also um i think uh it's also an, a, a discussion an argument that i don't think it would should sit with anyone in particular to make mm-hmm. a to make a decision either way as to as, as to as to as to which sort of philosophy as it were is uh, is correct because mm-hmm. it's um uh you my inclination is to is to respect the views of those on both sides um i wouldn't want to go into as a, as a as a creative as a writer i wouldn't want to go into a situation like that and feel that I had the right to show that one or the other was uh, you know, preferable or um, a better way of living uh, a better uh, a better approach to life I, I would I, uh, I, I would feel that 
uh, that that would be disrespectful to to both sides. Um, so, uh, and uh, that's probably why it's an ongoing um, it's a, it's an ongoing uh, narrative in in mm. our lives anyway because. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, I suppose unless there was a figurehead uh, who uh, who miraculously could reconcile the whole thing. Uh, which is not going to happen. Which is, no, which is not going to happen, no. no. Uh, you know, uh, they, they'll, they'll sort of just bubble along side by side, uh, you know, until we, presumably until we get to a point where one or the other... Um, has just sort of fizzled out, as it were. It's interesting um, what you're saying there. As a creative, you wouldn't feel comfortable doing one side or the other, hmm. you know, as in this is right, this is wrong. Is that... Because now we've gone a bit... But no, it's not going away from the episode, really. It's going into how an episode affects a person, so it's right. Um, like myself... I would probably be more inclined as a writer based on my lived experience that I'd probably be a bit more anti-religion, at least religion in the fundamental sense, um, because I've seen personally the damage it can do to people. Having done that older, what is it, nearly 10 years as a pretty fundamental Christian way back in the 90s, ironically when this show was being aired, um, Go figure. Maybe DS9 woke me up. Could be, possibly. Um, so I think if I was writing such a book or a show like this, even I, I would more, probably end up leaning more on the side of the fundamentalism's bad. I think yeah. I, I because I don't think I could be true to myself, even as a writer, to keep it as a grey. You know, I don't think I could do it because my own personal experience is too strong to ignore it, mm -hmm. you know, which is probably why this side of DS9 always fascinates me. The idea that you've got Kira and of course, most of the Jorans who look at the wormhole as the celestial temple, look at the wormhole aliens as prophets and they still worship them, even though Kira's first hand experienced them now for what they really are. You see, I still land on a side of science um, because I can't, you know, because even this show, I don't know, does this show lean more towards they are aliens or is it leaning towards they really are the prophets that the Bajor and see? I don't know, that last conversation between Kira and uh, Cisco, to me, I always get a sense that that's the show kind of leaning more they are aliens. We I know they are. Well, yeah, I think, I think they're... they're and they, but they can be both at the same time. That's well, the, yeah, it's all but how you perceive them. It's actually, it's a perception thing. So, um, and of course, I suppose it's Clark's law, isn't it? As well, to a point, you know, to these yeah. primitive pre. Well, they were before the uh, Kardashians completely ruined them. Uh, society. They just saw all these things they couldn't understand. This science they didn't understand as magic, and so naturally. And that's become so ingrained in them, they can't come across. Mm. I, I say can't overcome it, but Kira, even at this point, she still sees the science of it. But fundamentally, her belief system is always clearly at odds with the science that she's been experienced to, which I find yes. endlessly fascinating. Yes, I think I, I, if, if I was asked to, if I was asked to sort of predict how she would develop at this point I, I then I come think, on predict how she would develop i <laughs> i think uh, uh i i can i can see some the next some, six years quite real time some some real in-depth sort of soul searching as it were for for kira as because the the evidence that she is presented with uh, mm -hmm. has been presented with so far presumably will continue be, to be presented with uh doesn't always um match with the, the that the, the sort of philosophy that she, yeah. with which she approaches life um uh, so much so that i think it 
in this episode, I think it, it is a surprise to the viewer, mm. or the the uninitiated viewer, when she says her her um, sympathies are with um, uh, Vedic Win, mm. um, even though she knows uh, she did uh, rather well. than with like the, the Federation being mm. the the sort of the side of of enlightened science. Uh, you know uh, the enlightened side, which is it was, it works if you ask me anyway. But uh, well, it depends how you look at it. <laughs> it's um, yeah, but I, I, so, so that that I was so I was slightly taken. I was slightly, not taken aback, slightly wrong footed by by that. And uh, but it, again, it added it added an, an interesting edge. Okay, uh, conversely, the episode. All right, conversely then, because shockingly, Cisco's not as big a part of this episode as he probably should be, given his kind of connection to Bajor now. No, but he is um, key to it. He is. He um, just doesn't have an awful lot to say. Cause no. Other people are, other well, I people suppose, again, say. he's doing what he usually does. He's leading from the side, isn't he? He's not he actually, is. you know, he's the builder. He helps people yeah. to yeah. come to conclusions of doing it for them. Exactly. Um if you were to predict, mm-hmm. you started this. If you were to predict um, Cisco's development, bearing in mind the position he is in in this episode, yeah, what do you reckon? Six years on, um, I haven't a clue where Cisco. Okay, um, I certainly don't see him. I don't see any reason for him not to continue treading the path he's already treading. Okay, so walking this in between of Starfleet commander, and but apparently kind of spiritual figure as well. Um, yeah, I mean the spiritual the spiritual figure thing has uh, that's that has largely been that's largely taken a back seat, hasn't it, throughout mm-hmm. most of this series? Well, yeah, you barely heard mention of it until this episode, really. I think for a while. Anyway. I am going to sneeze. I'll okay. just warn you now. See if I can mute. No, no, talking about it, it's gone away. No, Go no, on, okay. yeah, see, talk about what he's like. Yeah, bye-bye. Just reaching for the mute button, and it's gone. So, um, yeah, the, the so I suppose potentially, uh, if if this episode isn't is indicative of the way that the series could progress, then that spiritual leader uh, responsibility um, will, uh, I would imagine, it's already obviously something that he he struggles to justify within himself mm. so uh, i can i can only assume that that would that that would continue in in which case it would it should based on this episode uh, cause him considerable concern okay uh, it's another thing that might make him run away <laughs> very possible um no prediction then um because there's not many people had major roles this episode O'Brien kind of did, I suppose. The others were just sort of... They didn't play a huge part, um, Dax and... No, they kind of got their sure. moments. And, yeah. uh, just, it was almost like just to remind everyone that they're there. They're still there. They're still there doing yeah. their thing. Um, Keiko. Yeah. <laughs> Bless her. Favourite character. Um, where do you see her going? Home. Um... <laughs> Be nice, wouldn't it? Um, Send it back to oh Earth, God. yeah. I don't know. Um, I was just thinking, of, actually, as, before you do, that this teaching thing, since that first episode, well, episode two, I think it must have been, where she got the teaching gig, have we actually seen her in that role in this entire season? Well, I know we've I heard mention of the school. There's been mention of it, and I think once or twice, I think once or twice that uh, it has been shown. Mm. Um, uh, in some of the early episodes, but just like but stuff not, like when not for a very long yeah. time, stuff like when Nog was or Nog's dad was very anti to school for a while and all that kind of stuff, yeah, yeah, but yeah, because um, you sort of forget that she's been teaching this whole time because they keep sending her off to do botany stuff on the planet. Well, that's what she is, it's what she is a botanist, isn't mm. she? Is it a botanist? Yeah, yeah. so, um, yeah, I. Yeah, I don't know. She just, hmm. 
I, I, it still just strikes me that they're just looking for something for us to do. Pretty much. Um, and I'm, I, and I, I'm not entirely, I'm, I'm not entirely convinced by her protestations that, that that's what she really wants to do and that's what she has to do on the station. And she's going to keep doing it despite what anyone else, you know, does. It's just, it's, it doesn't ring true, does, does it? Does not, she doesn't convince. No. I, I, the, I, I don't know whether it's the, whether it's the, the, the actor in the role, um, or the whether writing. it's the writing in the writing or, or what maybe. I think a bit of both. Cause it's just, in this episode, when you see her teaching, it's like, you're not really teaching much, are you? You're just sort of being like a professor. You're just giving a lecture. Oh, standing up, yeah. Standing that's there not really and... teaching, is it? No. Now, it's... she asks a question. Well, I'll give you the answer anyway. You know, it's like, well, no. She didn't, she didn't like when Kai, when Vedic win. I may be slipping up here. When Vedic win, <laughs> um, she was there in the school the class because it wasn't much of a school was it really um she didn't seem to bring anything out of her pupils you know it's like wow well, you just failed fundamental stuff not once did you show this visitor how you engage with your pupils how you interact with them because yeah. other than jake nobody said a damn word and it's like yeah and so yeah that may be why she doesn't convince because clearly she's just not very good at it even though she's been doing it for yeah. a year. Yes. So I was also really distracted by the like fact that she, Kato, Kato. She's, um, she, she got a blocked nose. I don't know whether she's got sinus trouble or adenoids. Oh, or she? But, I don't uh, know. I was, was constantly, constantly, um, I was constantly distracted by the sound of her nasal, mm. nasal voice. I didn't even notice that. So, um, yeah. <laughs> it's not, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she 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 doesn't she doesn't convince at all. No. Um, whereas everyone else does. As I said, she gets some good stuff later in the series, but usually when she's not really being Keiko, which to me just says it's a really badly written character. Mm. You know that they were lumbered with a character they didn't want. Presumably, they wanted O'Brien, but unfortunately Keiko came with him. They're like, oh crap, what should we do with this character? You know? Or just keep sending off to Beja or something. Yeah, okay, we'll do that. Because I didn't feel... Am I thinking ahead? No, I'm thinking ahead. I'll shut up. Well, she spent a lot of this series going back to Earth to visit her 100-year-old Oh, yes, mother. of course, that's well, yeah, she did that too. Yeah, she went to Beja or possibly Beja Moon or something in the system. And occasionally they mentioned school, but not necessarily her teaching them. But yes. presumably it was her teaching them. But then she keeps going off for these like long vacations. Because going to Earth, I would assume, even with warp speed, bear in mind this is quite far away out, must take some days, mm. at least a week, I imagine, to get there and back plus the visit. So Maybe they have it makes you wonder there. how much of these kids being taught anyway. Yeah, exactly. It's like what, you have yeah. a couple of lessons a month? Like, well, good luck. I mean, it's like going back in um, the days of workhouses, isn't it? When kids were had like, you know, like a bit like um, Gwen says in, um, or Gwyneth rather, says in the Young Quiet Dead episode of Doctor Who, it's like, oh, well, I do my sums. I go on Sunday and, you know, oh. that's how much school I do. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, okay, that's it. Yes, what, yeah. how much do you do in a week? <laughs> uh, too much, clearly. Uh, bless the kids. I feel sorry for the Bajoran kids if they're being taught by Keiko. Oh. Fan. Sorry. I cannot cannot pretend otherwise. But moving aside of Keiko, mm. damn good episode, hey. Um, uh, as I said, on the whole, uh, on the whole, very enjoyable, yes. Mm. Um, uh, nice. Uh, and and the, the started off, yeah, very, I think, I think you probably commented when we were watching it just um a discomfort there mm. where, where it, when it kind of lays its cards down uh, and you think okay this is this is a this Ooh. is a religion <laughs> as a science yeah type, uh episode um, how are they gonna do this then and um uh you know and at the end of the day also that that did 
like with the thing in America, it's the kids that end up suffering because yep. uh, because of someone's um, potentially narrow minded. Uh, views on what on what information they should be given uh, and what they should be given as fact or whatever um mm -hmm. and then you kind of uh, and then as it develops and you get this you think okay there is a bit of a it's not just it, it's not just this this dialogue uh one side against another there is actually a bit of a mystery going on here things are things are happening and th there was a there was a moment where uh, i clicked that um was it do you say it was Nila? Was that the character? Nila, yeah. Apparently Nila, yeah. Nila, where I, I thought, okay, she's there's she's she's definitely involved with this mm. somehow because she can't not be really because of the way she's been the introduced and, 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 and used. Uh and then it's it it's kind of then like um uh, like a thriller, is it? as it progresses towards the end and the the kind of the pace and the urgency and the and the and the stakes they they, they ramp up more and more so I, I did like the way that that played out as the episode uh progressed yeah it's an it's it's it starts off as 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 a very uncomfortable episode that, mm -hmm. because i think you you don't know or certainly on the first time viewing you don't know where it's going to go yeah so uh, because of that it's 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 uh it's uncomfortable and as soon as as soon as the kind of other uh, the other things start to click into place and you think okay this i can i can kind of relate to this now more because it's not just it's not just a discussion that actually maybe i don't want to be part of or i would normally if this discussion was going on at a party or uh, yeah, or, or something, I would I would leave the room. <laughs> you know, I would go to the kitchen. Find out what's going on. There's a thriller on in the kitchen. That's good. Someone's Which I'd be like, someone's right then. Bombs. Yeah, this is okay. <laughs> I can I can cope with that. I can so let him do that much more. This is this is yeah. This is more than more playing to my expectations as a as a viewer. Mm. Um, uh, and. Because I think at the end of the day, one has to look at these kind of shows as escapism. Of course, um, to a point, yeah. It's it, you know, it the it's Star Trek, uh, well, sci-fi, uh, sci-fi and fantasy as a uh, as a whole, I think, are shows that you that you have to look at as as a form of escapism, and so it, they can mirror. Um, and they they probably work best when they do mirror what's going mm. on in, in real life as well. But it has to be something that you can, you can kind of, uh, uh, you can sort of snuggle up with for a, for an hour or so, you dip your feet in, and then at the end of it, come out again. And either you think, oh, that was wonderful, and I desperately want the next one now, mm. or you kind of think, okay, I, I, that was that was an enjoyable fix for you know for for today or for this week or whatever. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to the next one, and uh, you know, and that if it becomes something that you you know you have to you have to watch, it becomes an obsession or whatever. Then that's and 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 you're kind of you, you sort of frame your life around it. That's when it becomes uh, that's when it becomes a problem. So I think that's why I, for me, it was only when the episode started to go into slightly more familiar territory, I suppose, yeah. in terms of in terms of the, the narrative, in terms of the story that it was telling, that I found that um, uh, that I, I, I could become comfortable with it as escapism again. Yeah. Um, second time watching it, if I do watch it again, um, that'll be different because I kind of know what I'm uh, getting into. Um, and I do, I, I do, I find that with, with certain TV shows, I find it with films a lot as well, that I will get just as much enjoyment the second time as I did the first time if it's something that I was uncomfortable with the first time hmm. um, because you're coming into I'm, it differently next time on you knowing yeah exactly yeah. you've got that you've got that knowledge so hmm. well as somebody who's watched this a few times um, I think it still holds up really well I like I can see the thrill aspect of it although that's not what I'm seeing as I'm watching it anymore because obviously 
a thriller, I think, if you watch it multiple times, it sort of stops you coming a thriller because you know, you know, the thrill's gone, as it were. Yeah. So it becomes a watching what's going on and seeing how they build it instead or looking at the themes or whatever. Whereas, like, when I watch this, obviously I'm looking at the themes of what's been discussed and stuff because I know where the story's going. I'm, I'm always impressed how, for Star Trek, because Star Trek often works best when it's about allegory like most sci-fi, um, whereas this one, although oddly very allegorical of the day, 30 years on, um, very specifically so actually, um, it still really goes into it in a way Star Trek normally wouldn't, in a much mm -hmm. more upfront way, I suppose. It's not, it's not so much subtly about it. It's very much, there's no allegory. It really is straight down the line. Yeah, head on, isn't it? Yeah, Boom. proper into it. it. More yeah. so probably, I suppose, in many ways than it does later, because I think once this is them to reassert their mission statement, I think now, there may be a few set exceptions, but I think generally going forward, they can, they're like, well, we're, we've got a long, we've got more long-term now, so we don't have to feel like we don't have to do it all in one big thing. We can spread out much more evenly throughout. Hmm. So we can do it in a much more organic way, I suppose, um, as opposed to just slam. Let's talk about it. But, you know, it worked, I think. I think it worked surprisingly well, actually. But very, un very atypical for Star Trek in that sense of being so... Well, Star Trek at the time, anyway. Now, actually, modern Trek's probably can be a bit more head on with stuff. Whereas of course different landscape now. You know. Yeah. I suppose you kind of expect it almost nowadays. Or certain fans don't expect it anyway. Um but yeah, so I think it's a really good episode. You know, obviously you think it's a really good episode. Mm -hmm. um, you know be interesting I did think when you mentioned this is the right one to end the season on, do you think the season would have ended well had the last episode been the last episode you know the previous episode i mean uh yeah that's a good shout actually um with that last bit of he's a kardashian that should be enough it isn't would that or does um, that make it would that make it the kira show because she gets that last beat possibly yes i mean it, i suppose last week's episode did it there was a, there would still have been the sort of the the sort of joining up of the circle mm. because of the because of it dealing with the Cardassian the issue. circle the circle um, remember that phrase the circle okay trust me um, you understand and um, uh, yeah so you you, you the, the, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have seemed out of place I think mm. if the series of the season had ended on duet. Yeah, it deals, with, it, yeah, it? Cause it still um, deals with one of the main story threads of the series, does. which is, of course, the occupation. Um, and this is dealing with the spiritual side of it. So, what yeah. um, what wouldn't have worked so well, I think, is if this had come last week and Duet had been, if they'd swapped the two episodes around. Hmm. Um, because this would have. Oh, well, Duet would have played differently because some of what happened in this episode would have had to have carried on. In duet yeah. in some way because obviously the nature of the S nine is that they wouldn't have ignored it. They would yeah, have exactly. had something. So that, yeah, yeah, that, that wouldn't that. have worked so well. But um, I think if yeah, if um, I don't think if, if this had been the first episode of the season two, for example, I don't think I would have watched it and thought, "Ooh, I would have had that as the end of season one." Okay. Yeah, because that, I think that, that it would have been it would have been an interesting way of uh, it would have uh, like it's a kind of um. Uh, it's it, it, it's an interesting sort of jumping on point, really, as yeah. um, as uh, because it it because of what it discusses the you know the wormhole and mm. and and the, and the Bajoran society. And, and yeah, because it's kind of the emissary part two, almost, isn't it? In that so, sense, yeah. yeah. So well, in, in, opening, in that yeah. sense, it could have been that it could I could see it as the second as the first episode of season two. Hmm. Um, but I I think seeing it all. You know, there. I think it does work best as the final episode of season yeah, one. I think so. I think yeah, it's a good, good, solid episode. Yeah. So, Tim, Andy, and indeed viewer, um, yes. welcome viewer. 
Hello, viewer. We've missed so far. <laughs> By the way. Um, so we're at the end of season one. Uh, we haven't decided whether we're going straight into season two or not. Mm. I think we might take a wee break. Maybe. What do you reckon? Let's decide now. They can find out uh, when we find out. Yeah. We take a week off. Let's have a week off. Let's have a week off. Okay. Let's so um, and we're also hoping to do something a little bit different, which will be a little while away yet. But in theory, within the next six weeks, but we'll see how it plans out. That thing we discussed last week. Yes. Um, and I'm, I'm not saying what that is, viewer, in case it doesn't happen. Because, uh, you know, you know what this life's like. But hopefully, if we can get this thing together, it'll be quite something different, you know. Um, so, yeah, we're going to take a week off. But nonetheless, Tim, the next episode when we get come back in two weeks, aptly, is called The Homecoming. What do you reckon? The Homecoming. Um... Um, that's not, no, it's not. I was going to say, is it the, is it the old Kai coming back? Uh, they managed to oh, find she... a way of getting her back. Well, that would scoop a, um, a Vedicrin, wouldn't it? It would. Oh, that, yeah. oh, God, that would have been interesting to see those two come face to face. Because clearly, despite what she said to Kira, she does not agree with Win, um, uh, Win, with, um, Opaka at all. Yeah. Very much not. But yeah, so that's next week, but one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, in that case, thank you all for watching again. Um, I've been Andy. And I've been Tim. He has been Tim. Uh, and we have been... Powered by Riverside FM. For most of this season. Um, so we'll be back. Hey, so we're getting good at this. Um, <laughs> we'll be back. We Yeah, seamless. One day we'll do it without even commenting on it. We'll just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so we're back in two weeks. Hopefully, I may have learned a few new tricks, Ben, but we shall see. I keep looking, but, you know, teaching old dog new tricks. We'll freaking well try. Anyway, bye-bye from me. And bye-bye from me. Bye-bye, Duggan.